Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. David Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new teen therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. David is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. <laughs> Did you ever wish you were an opera singer, David, before you became an <laughs> No, but I love the chance to be goofy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 200. This is a big episode for us. This is a special uh, episode. We're so grateful to get to 200, especially because we've been breaking download records on a daily basis, thanks to, to all of you. I can remember when we got to 100 and we had special guest Mark Noble, uh, and his uh, was just a fantastic podcast, so we had to get somebody equally fantastic for our 200th episode. It's not really our 200th because we've had six or seven Corona casts, but it's gonna be podcast 200. And we have a very special guest, someone who I like and admire tremendously, Linda Jackson, who is the publisher at PESI. And we're so excited to shoot the breeze with you today, learn about you, your work at PESI, uh, maybe a little bit about, about the new book and, uh, and cool stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think Thank a good you. segue might be um, to say hi to Linda. And I could read a, a, an, a, an endorsement of actually about Mark Noble. Yeah, that'd be cool. Good segue. Okay. So this was about episode 167 when we interviewed Mark Noble on Team CBT and the Brain. And that was her, our second interview with him on a podcast. Right. That was our second interview. Because like you said, the first one was episode 100. And this is from Carolyn, and she wrote us from Switzerland. And she wrote, I enjoyed this podcast very much. I like the explanation about why Team CBT works, because I'm someone who likes to know why and how something works. Your book, Feeling Good, and your podcasts are so great. I learn a lot. They're very practical, and they work. Thank you for making these resources available to everyone. Many greetings from Switzerland, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn, and thank all of you who have been so generous to send emails we get every day filled with with praise and and gratitude. It's it seems it seems like magic, and uh, but we we hope you keep listening, and we're gonna keep keep doing our thing, and uh, and just want to say thank you to 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 all of you. Your support is like a miracle. To, to me, we, we get together once a week and shoot the breeze and we have fun and people, people seem to like it. And a lot of people say it's changed their life or even saved their life. So yeah. it's, it's cool. It is cool. Well, we're going to talk to Linda about PESI and the publishing of your new book, Feeling Great. Um, but first, before we get to the publishing, I kind of wanted to ask you why you decided to write a new book, David. Like well, I've, I've written a number of books kind of following up on the techniques and feeling good, uh, various applications to uh, anxiety and, you know, when panic attacks and then a, a book on relationships. But I've never really written a book on all the new techniques that I've learned or developed, mainly developed in the past 40 years since Feeling Good was published. And Feeling Good represented the state of the art at that time. And, and my publisher's kept asking me, will you revise it? Will you update it? Uh, and, and then I looked at it. I hadn't looked at it in about 20 years, actually. Wow. And, and when I looked at it, I, I thought it was terrific, to be honest with you. And, and it didn't need re revision. It was great. It was all tightly interwoven, uh, ju just the way it was. And, and, I, and I said, uh, it, it, it's still helping people. It's still saving lives. It, it reads great. It's got tremendous content. But I've got all this new material now. These, these, that was all about, you know, cognitions and how to 
crush distorted thoughts and change the way you think and feel and all those methods are still good. But now we've got techniques uh, that are even more powerful that we can combine with those cognitive techniques to get even uh, more rapid, uh, ultra rapid re recovery. And that's what feeling great is about. And essentially, uh, you know, I, I, what I've learned s since feeling good is it's not all cognitions. All our feelings result from our thoughts. And when you're depressed or anxious, your thoughts are going to be distorted and illogical. And when you change the way you think, you can change the way you feel. And that's all still totally true. However, there's another dimension. And maybe some of our listeners have noticed how you or other people sometimes seem to get stuck in depression and, and, and resist change. Uh, and and Freud tried to solve this problem of resistance 100 years ago with his uh, psychoanalysis five days a week on the couch, but he couldn't solve the problem. His, his techniques weren't, weren't effective. And uh, b based on my research uh, over the last four decades on how uh, therapy works and my experience treating over 40,000 people with severe depression or sessions with people with severe depression and anxiety, I, I've, I've, I've discovered the secret of resistance and why people resist, and more important, how to, how to eliminate resistance the first time I meet with someone. And this has ushered in the era of ultra rapid uh, treatment, which, uh, which I'm per personally thrilled about. And I thought this is the time to uh, put these things in a, in a book so the general public could use them on their own, whether or not you have a therapist. And so therapists who were interested in the new techniques would have a really clear uh, guidepost to, to how to do the, the new team therapy. That's, that's it in a nutshell. Well, that sounds really exciting. So you're, yeah, and then Linda, tell us about PESI. Because what, I mean, I understand that PESI is not originally a publishing company and yet you, you're, you're publishing David's book. How did that process get started? How did you know <laughs> that David? Absolutely and true. We are, we are not known as a publisher, but we are growing into a publisher. But at the Roots, we're an education company. Last year, we celebrated our 40th anniversary. And it's always been rooted in education and our, and our mantra of sharing knowledge with need. Um, we, it was about, I don't know, I think at the beginning of PESI, when it started, we published legal books. And that kind of morphed into nurse legal books. And from there, it was mental health books and then law and we just really moved to the spot we are in now and it's just really resonated with people as we are bringing some of the information that we have from our speakers and making them into books and practical books, workbooks, uh, skills guides, things that, that therapists can use in their practices. Now, most of your prior publications have been books for therapists. I know since your uh, merger with Psychotherapy Network, or now you've got, I think, almost a million people on your emailing list, most of them therapists. What made you decide to uh, work with this bizarre guy, David, on a book for the general <laughs> public, which is a, 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 like a new, a new direction for you to some extent? Uh, there is a little bit of overlap because the, the, the professional side and then the public side, um, anxiety is a good thing to like people want self-help books and people want to have those answers to those questions of what's troubling people. And this was a great thing. I mean, who could turn down a title that says feeling great? Mm -hmm. And it was, we've known David, uh, Pessy has since 2016, I learned because we we got him to speak for us on a few things. We were honored by that uh, on some webcasts and some other events. And it, it, it was really a serendipitous moment when somebody said, hey, David Burns has a, a book. He's looking for a publisher, somebody in our organization. And we connected with David. So it wasn't, uh, we weren't looking. It just, I think it just was meant to be that we came together and uh, I, I couldn't be happier and more proud of this. And we're, it's such an honor to be part of publishing this book because it's going to help so, so many people. I feel the same way. Uh, what One thing as I've become older and more uh, demented and, and elderly, I think I've really appreciated other people and working together on a team and how fantastic it, it is to have people you like and really care about who are 
skillful and, and creative and, and, and to work together. Working with you, Rhonda, has been just a joy uh, to, to me and you've been just so fantastic. And working with you, Linda, has been the same thing. That's why I wanted to, to work with Tessie because of your warmth, your skill, you're you're down to to earth. Uh, you're you're wanting to to work hard to to make something happen, and to me that's where the where the magic is. So it's been it's been a great thing for me. And maybe after this podcast, probably tons of aspiring authors will be contacting you <laughs> about their, their their books. But I can tell you, it's it's just been a great a great experience for me. Uh, it, I really appreciate that. Thank you for those kind words. You know, we, we feel the same way. It's a partnership, and we like to leverage what those experiences are. And with David, he has the content knowledge, and we have the marketing knowledge, we feel. As David mentioned, we have a pretty big file that, that includes professionals and also public, the public people, too, over a million email names. We have well, a great relationship with uh, some of the resellers, too, that will get this book out in the marketplace. Now, um, you, Linda, uh, chose a fantastic editor for me. The whole thing in writing a book is you've, you've got to have a great editor because most of us, we think our, all of our words are golden and generally 90% of them are go, need to go down the toilet. Then you come up with a nice <laughs> tight, tight book. And uh, you came up with this Janessa Jackson, who was uh, really fantastic. She's got a PhD in neuroscience or something. So her husband's a clinical psychology professor, but I was kind of suspicious about her last name. <laughs> name was similar to yours. And I said, is this, is this Linda's daughter or who is this, uh, this brilliant woman? Well, even with a common last name, yes, you were very intuitive and it's my daughter-in-law. Um, she has amazing gifts, amazing gifts. Yes, she has a PhD. She had a clinical practice for a while, moved away from that and really just had such a passion for editing and a real gift and for doing some content writing and development. It's just been a wonderful fit for us. And for Pessy, we're so thankful that she helps us with that. And that she was able to help you, David. And I know at the beginning, it was a little, I was a little nervous because yeah. I didn't know how it was gonna go. Yeah, yeah. I didn't either. And uh, what, what, we was got the editing, what was the editing process like? Well, it evolved into something really great because uh, she she just had excellent judgment and she was super thoughtful and super attention to detail and all of her suggestions were just were just terrific. The thing that you need the most, at least that I need the most when I'm writing, is I tend to overwrite things. I think most people do, and you need a, a great editor as someone who can take maybe a page and a half and condense it to maybe three or four really great sentences and you and, and you realize you didn't lose anything uh -huh. and so it moves along in, in a beautiful way for, for for the reader and that's that requires effort and and sometimes you know i started out with a great editor maria at uh, william morrow who published my first book feeling good maria guarnish Ellie, and she was really a sweetheart and a tremendous talent. She was just getting started in her career, and so we kind of helped helped each other. But she gave a lot of attention to uh, to the writing. And I remember when I went to New York and, and I we signed the contract. She said, "Oh, okay. Now there's this one thing I want to tell you is that your book sucks." <laughs> and, and 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 you learned all, all this writing at Amherst, and, and and you know no one's can understand this stuff, and it's boring. You've got to write, you know, in a way for the general public, and say things like this, David. Say, uh, when you're depressed, you you feel worthless, and and it seems as true as the fact that there's skin on your hand, but you're not. You're fooling yourself. You know. She says, that's what people want to hear. Make it punchy, make, make, make it clear. And so I really appreciate it because the, the writing became a learning process for me mm -hmm. and I've always loved to learn. But then after a while, you know, when my book started s selling a lot, s sadly the negotiations turned into just contract things and all about the money and the business. And, and, and I couldn't get that great editing help a a anymore. I could get great contracts, 
but I didn't care much about that because yeah. even feeling good, I never intended it to be a, a best-selling book. I just thought it would be a handout for my patients. Sure. Uh, and that it kind of evolved in, in the way it, it evolved. Was it hard but, to uh, accept any of the editing comments that she made? No. No? No, that, that was a nice thing. I mean, and it's the same, you know, Alex, who we interviewed yesterday, uh, for, for a podcast, Alex Clark, uh, she, she was kind of e e egoless, uh, just kind of helpful, but not real defensive or argumentative or something. Once you get that, that tone into a relationship, it, it's really good relationship. And that's the way it's been with you too, Linda, you're just like a helper. You're like a, an enlightened guru or something. You're, you're, you're very <laughs> humble, but you have this incredible knowledge and skill. David, I'd I, like, you're just about, can I ask you one more question, just to follow up with this? Do you like the process of writing? Do I personally? Yes. Oh, I absolutely love it. I'm addicted to it. I just love to, to write. Different people have different things they, they, they like to do, uh, but, I, but I love to write, and I love to try to write in a simple, clear way. When, I, when Reader's Digest asked me to write a couple articles for them about my book, Feeling Good, uh, they they said I would have to write at the fifth grader level or the fourth grade level, and and I said that's ridiculous. That, that's undignified. Uh, you know, I'm, I've graduated from Amherst College, and you know, I've done research, and I'm a psychiatrist. I have important things to say, and they said, okay, well, take it or leave it. If if you don't want to write at the fourth grade level, we don't want to work with you. Keep in mind, though, if you do, your article will be read by 95 million people around oh the world. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And I, and I said, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, 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 you know, what I've found is some people look down on real simple writing. They think you, most academics write in really big words mm -hmm. and they try to impress people. And I, I've learned to, to go in the opposite direction. And, you know, half the people in the United States have IQs below 100, right? Right. But even the people who have IQs over 100 appreciate something readable. Everyone appreciates something understandable. Yeah. I had a yeah. colleague when I was at Penn, that collaborator in research named Martin Prang. And he helped me write a paper that I won a very prestigious award for. And he's one of the top mathematicians in the United States and probably in the world. And he was great because he could make the most complicated nonlinear simulation things on computers seem as obvious as you know, at the fourth grade level, everything you said was super simple. And I've always loved teachers who can make things super simple. And that's right. what I've aspired to. Yeah. I think that's why you're such a great match for Kessie, because we publish and we're kind of known for with our education events and with books of practical, applicable knowledge that you can put to use immediately. And that's why we knew that when we saw that. I loved your conversational style. I just personally like that anyway. And I think people learn from that. And seeing that, it didn't need that much work, really, other than you mentioned with Janessa having to take the scissors to a few things here. Yeah. Come back. But uh, otherwise, every word was gold. And, and uh, it's, even though it's got to be kind of a big book, but 500 and some pages is such an easy and fast read. I think I removed eight chapters at that. <laughs> <laughs> we want people to be able to carry the book out of the bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, I'd love to hear a little about your personal story. I know of your professional stature at PESI and in the publishing world. I know of your warmth and kindness. I know of your tremendous skill and expertise and I suppose to a certain extent some power as the publisher of a powerful company but but I'd be curious a little uh, your personal story how you got from point A to point Z or where, where... Sure, sure I grew up in uh, Minneapolis uh, a few years ago but uh, are you Scandinavian I sure am what yeah. Swedish or Swedish yeah 100 percent no 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 Oh, I'm 100% Swedish. I know. I remember. Born in Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah. So we have that in common, too. Uh, but I've always had an interest in the written word. In fact, when I was growing up, I would go to the library and check out scripts from the Dick Van Dyke show. Oh. oh. Because I, I wanted to be a TV writer, and I was going to go to Los Angeles, and I was going to be a TV writer. Yeah. 
I don't know, that didn't kind of pan out. But I, I also had a very interest in sports. And my high school, I, I was editors of the sports pages and the overall management of the newspaper. In college, I worked on our newspapers. And it just took me to an area where I just love writing. I, too, love writing. And I love uh, just reading and getting that knowledge out there. And so that just translated so well when I was at PESI and that, that connection of what we want. We're very passionate at PESI about getting that knowledge out there and sharing education. That's what it's for. And we're, I'm just so fortunate we have those avenues to really get that information out there. Did you go into PESI after college? I did, did. yeah. I'm, I've, I'm a journalism person and I was gonna write sports for some sports newspapers, but I was a little ahead of my time, I think, for having female sports writers. Just a hair ahead of my time. Mm -hmm. And they weren't interested in that. They wanted guys, but uh, that's fine. It, it didn't work out. And I feel that this worked out the best for me. And I, How long first, have you been, been with Pessy? Uh, in August, it'll be 15 years. Oh, wow. And prior to that, I worked at a marketing company, actually, they are a shoe manufacturer, and I was in direct mail and business management uh, for a while. It's a company in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. That's where I live. You know, it's called Mason Companies, and they market shoes. Well, that's where I was for almost 20 years. Oh, I see. I was too pissy. Cool. I've always had my hand in some kind of marketing, which I also love. I just love it. Just so much fun. Yeah, that's what I learned too when when Feeling Good was was published because I didn't get any marketing support from from my company because they the president thought it had no potential so they they didn't invest in it and so I kind of had to scramble on my own to try to figure out how to market it. I didn't really really know much of anything when when it was uh, uh, when it when it came out. My Maria called me and she said, we sent your book to 10 magazines for, for serial rights, like Ladies Home Journal and Cosmo and Self and things like that. And she said they, they all rejected it. So, uh, and, and that's all we're, we're able to do for you. Wow. Uh, but here it's the phone numbers of those 10 magazines. So why don't you call up and see if you can get them to change their mind? Oh. And so Ouch. I felt so bad and the, the, the next when I w went home that night from the train station I, I started shouting out loud you're a loser oh, no. <laughs> yeah I, and then and I shout out no you're not <laughs> you're gonna win this battle this is just the first round and then I went home and I told Melanie I said we have to celebrate tonight and I said why is that I said well the, Maria sent the book to 10 magazines and none of them wanted anything to do with it so we need to celebrate and she said well why should we celebrate and I said well anyone can you don't need to celebrate when you win you need to celebrate when you lose because you need some TLC and warmth and, and, and support so we went out and had a fancy expensive meal and uh, and kind of celebrated and then the next day I started calling these magazines and it was the same conversation like I call this Ladies Home Journal, I would get somebody's assistant. And I would say, oh, I'm Dr. David Burns. I understand you rejected my book, Feeling Good. And and I, I, I would like you to change your, your mind, you know, or something like that. <laughs> and they Please would change say, your mind about my book. <laughs> yeah, and then they would say things like, uh, Dr. Burns, we consider this uh, phone harassment. <laughs> Uh, authors don't contact us. We've oh rejected gosh. your book. Please do wow. not ever contact us <laughs> That's again. That's so vicious. And every magazine s said that. That was my start. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, well, Linda, what's, what's going to be the difference with feeling great? I don't think it's going to be. <laughs> every seen. book that we, uh, we publish, we make a, you know, we go through quite a few rounds of looking at books, seeing what has potential. What do we have? What's a, what's a need in our marketing niche? Uh, what can we do? And we don't take that lightly. We're behind a book a thousand percent and we market it because why? Um, that's not our model just to publish a book and let it sit. So part of it is, of course, the marketing. We, have a, we had some, of a, some pretty big um, arms when we had the seminar business before that came to kind of a, a halt with the live seminar business in March with the coronavirus. But we're getting that back with doing lots of digital presentations. 
Linda, are you gonna but, are you gonna publish or I don't know if that's the right word. Are you gonna put out an audio book as well as the published book? We are. We are. And as a matter of fact, I just was interviewing somebody today for reading the book. Somebody that has a lot of that skill and experience with reading books. I'm learning. It takes a because we haven't done an audio book before. Um, and it takes quite a, a skill for somebody to do that and get the right inflection and just tone and really a good cadence with it. Mm -hmm. Which I'm just, it's been fun to learn about that. And I know he'll do a terrific job if that's the one we choose. But. A couple colleagues have expressed an interest. I've passed their names on to Linda, who are oh, eager exciting. to have a shot at being yeah. the, the audio voice, including some people that, that, that one person you know, uh, Rhonda, mm -hmm. who's, who's really, really awesome and warm and super enthusiastic. Um, this would be a chance to give a little pitch for, for the book that. Uh, uh, I, we've started mentioning it on podcasts about two weeks ago, but it's available now on uh, Amazon for pre-order and it will mm -hmm. be released in the middle of September. And so if any of you want to pre-order it and you'll get, get it on September 15th and then your pre-order will count toward when they tally best sellers status right. or potential on September 15th. So that will will help me, although the main goal would be to help yourself because I think the book has a, a lot of really great uh, new information and radically different and potent techniques that can lead to, to rapid, rapid recovery. Also, Linda, we're coming along great on our, on our app too, when we might have something. Oh, good. Um, right. Jeremy has been so incredibly creative and he's got these wonderful programmers working now. We're going to be trying to raise some, some funds soon. We haven't tried for mon fundraising yet, but we've got partial uh, prototypes and beta uh, versions. We're getting beta testing feedback all the time and the feedback has radically changed the way we do the app, just like the feedback we get in therapy all the time. Our patients teach us when they use the evaluation of therapy session, the therapist gets rated every session by the patient. And you can see at the start and end of session, mood ratings exactly how effective you've been at every session. And that's, that's really what's given birth to the new team therapy. And we're finding the same thing. What, what do people using the app like? What turns them off? And we've radically ch changed the, the app on, on an ongoing basis. So it's been a fun, fun learning process, uh, but it's, there, there's a lot of uh, creative and talented people who are mm -hmm. helping us out. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Is there another place to buy the book or pre-order the book besides Amazon? Well, we, we'd really prefer people go to Amazon and you'll get the best price on Amazon just because they've been reducing it at certain times. You can also go to the PESI site too, but that doesn't count towards getting to our goal of being a New York Times bestseller which is something we really would like to do. Uh -huh. There's some other outlets that um, th those count, but really Amazon is the easiest. And you can yeah. just go there because cool. they'll, they'll have it. I just wanted to share too, right now, um, we're just in the last uh, uh, final lap, if you will, of finishing the book. It has July 2nd, it goes to the printer. And um, so we're just putting some last minute touches on it. The it's index. Not, the index is in. We've got some other last minute touches that David and I will be talking about tomorrow morning. Fun. And um, it takes about probably a month or so to get that printed. We're printing it with a, a company that's in Canada, just on, on the north border of uh, North Dakota. And they're just a wonderful printer. We've used them and they're just terrific. Um, so we're, we're very pleased with that. Awesome. Do you know how many the first printing will be? 25,000. No kidding. Oh, that's fantastic. We're all first... in on this, David. Yeah, We're all in on this. I think the first printing of Feeling Good was like 3,000 or something like that. And then they, they sold out in about 10 minutes, but they didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, we'd, they... rather, we'd rather err on the side of having too many, which I don't think we will. Yeah, we that's be, great. We want to be poised for those orders that they, when they do come in. Oh, yeah. Because if you hit a good TV show, bang it happens it happens overnight Immediately. And, yeah. and plus the work that we're having with the pr firm that we've engaged um i expect some great things and once you start having some interviews which will happen probably about a month before release or somewhere in that time frame the thing i feel it's going to explode 
I just love really doing is. interviews. I can't wait. Wait, I have one more yeah. question. Will David get to go on any talk shows like Ellen DeGeneres or? Um... Ellen has been after us. We've had to turn her down. <laughs> Trump has asked to appear on a podcast. We had to turn him down. <laughs> wait, Stephen Colbert might want to interview you. I think. <laughs> We're but sure working on that. And the PR firm does know that that's one of the goals. And, Actually, you don't know this, but I've, I've written Ellen DeGeneres. Have you? <laughs> Asking her to interview David. Yeah. <laughs> she hasn't responded yet, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> well, she calls me constantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want, we can send her a book. We can send her a oh, book. Oh, yeah, we want to send her a book. You just never know. Yeah, we sure. really don't. <laughs> Sure, that's right. You never know. You never know. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, when I was doing one when, when I finally got a chance to tour a little bit when feeling good started to uh, sell after a couple of years, they they toured me to several cities, but they they couldn't get much media in mm -hmm. in any city, so it was kind of an embarrassment. And I was in Dallas, and this woman had been hired to drive me around to my media appearances, but there were a couple like tiny little radio shows, uh -huh. and it didn't amount to much. And, and she said, oh gosh, most authors, they get all of these interviews. And, and she said, why don't we just walk into the Dallas Morning News and just tr try to pr force them to interview you there for, sure. for an article. <laughs> and, and so we went in and this guard came up, you know how they won't let anyone in. Oh, sure. And yeah. she said, oh, this is Dr. Burns. He has uh, interviews for, in his new book here, you know, I'm his his driver they say oh okay you can go on, on up so we went went on and there's this big room with all of these people i guess reporters and we found the some daily living section or something or where they send the books for review and 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 she walked up so this is dr burns he has this new book feeling good and uh it's all about new treatments for depression we'd love to have you uh, interview him and then they picked up the book and said we rejected this book please go away. You, you have, you're not allowed to be in this part of the building. How'd you get down? And, and, we, and so we said, out of the building. And it was so humiliating. And, <laughs> and so we, the, the person I was with said, well, uh, maybe someone else here in the room is interested in like depression or the, you know, healthy, this or that. And she said, okay, we well, can go see so-and-so at, at a desk, but I'm sure she won't be interested either. So we walked over to this other desk and said, oh, I'm Dr. Burns. I have this new book on, on depression. It's a new treatment. And she said, listen, I'm really busy. I don't have time, you know, to deal with this right now. And it was just, it was humiliating. And then, then we, we said, well, uh, is there anyone else here who might have an interest in, in, in depression? And she said, oh, well, there's so-and-so. I think she told me she was depressed as a teenager. Why don't you go talk to her? And so we went to this third person, but by then it was getting so late, like we had to get off to get to the airport because I had a flight. And, and so I just told this woman, you know, I've had this new book on, it's a drug-free treatment for depression. And, and I don't know if you'd have any interest in maybe doing an interview. And she says, I'm going to get the photographers right now, go into this room. She, she, she said, I, I almost committed uh, uh, suicide oh. when I was a teenager. Wow. And, and I'm definitely going to write an article about your book. And then, and then we said, but, you know, I, I've got to go in 10 minutes to get to the airport. And she <laughs> we'll said, I, I don't care. We're just, we'll just take your picture and I'll just make up an interview <laughs> based on your book. <laughs> and then two weeks later, this article appeared in the, da in the Dallas Morning News, a big feature article with my photograph. And it was syndicated in like 280 newspapers around the wow. United States. Nice. So you, you, you just never cool. know. But it was so hard and it, w it was so hum humiliating because I was ashamed, you know, and I, I right. thought I, I shouldn't have to do this and this is right. wrong and this is unfair. But um, well, uh, we aim to uh, right that wrong. With, yeah, uh, right. That to that's, here. that's right. Yeah. But, well, thank okay, you well, so thank much, you. Linda. Just it's heartwarming. I, I'm just so glad that we had you on this special 200th uh, uh, it's not a 200th anniversary. We're not that old. <laughs> We're not that old. Not <laughs> yet. Podcast and, and Rhonda, it's just been a joy, you know, working with, with you. Uh, I think our audience has, has, has more than doubled since, since you, wow. since you, 
find out. <laughs> it's my it's my honor and my privilege. You know, you're just such a kind and thoughtful person to work with, and you know the you know the acceptance that you give everyone and the support is just you know as I know it's a cliche, but it's overwhelming and it's yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's amazing. No, but really, so, for all of us, it's like being in a magic show or something. But it's, but it's uh, so true. Yeah. It's so yeah. true. Thank you very much for having me. It just it was my pleasure to be here. And, and Thanks. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. Likewise. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Anything everyone. we have to say at the end? Rhonda? No, just see you next time. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this episode under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. The theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.